Hi, this is Clark on Temptress. Today I'm going to do a short video on how to use a bank manager, any bank manager, including the Gen 1, which I don't have here, to be the brains for a good lithium iron phosphate charge controller. I did a video a couple weeks ago on how to charge lithium iron phosphate batteries. It's uh, becoming quite popular, as it should. It is the right way. I stand behind it. Uh, of course, there's a lot of trolls that are saying I don't know what I'm talking about, and they're basing this on their like 10 minutes of research of what a battery company told them to do. Uh, for the most part, um, if you read the white papers uh, from the actual academic sources on how to charge the batteries, you'll find that everything I said in that video is correct. The white papers are not easy to find <laughs> and uh, they're not easy to read. They are not designed for the general population. The biggest problem, of course, is that the battery companies are actually telling you to charge them in a simplistic way and the simplistic way is not optimal for these batteries. So today I'm going to talk about how to actually make a charger yourself, kind of, that can charge these batteries. Now, of course, um, I'm a fan of my bank managers because, well, I designed them, I built them. They're the only thing I know. I mean, honestly, I keep looking around and nobody else has got my algorithm. There have been several companies who've tried to do what I do with the bank manager. Um, I've looked into all of them and I believe they all miss the mark at, in some way. Uh, mostly they miss the mark by quite a bit, quite honestly. Uh, the one that is probably the most known company is Epic Batteries. Uh, Epic Batteries' newest BMS has a facility to stop the charge process early. Sounds like a good idea. Um, it's The idea is, I guess, Epic is a battery company that sells expensive batteries with a warranty, and they plan on being around for a while. And they're getting batteries back after a few years that are dying. So they don't want to be replacing these batteries. Uh, so they put something in the BMS, you know, to protect them so that you won't have bad batteries and they can make more profit. It's to everybody's advantage. Uh, what you can take away from that is Epic Battery says, don't charge past 100%. Uh, you know, that's the heart of what the bank manager does. Their algorithm is terribly lacking and it, it doesn't do the job. It's like the simplest possible way you could think to do the job. And there's, it's a very complex problem. Uh, I don't go into the problem, that's the other video. The short of it is, um, there's also lots of uh, web pages around right now explaining how to charge Epic batteries to avoid their algorithm because their algorithm is stopping the batteries from charging uh, properly uh, at all. <laughs> so that's an issue. Uh, the bank manager does do this well. Um, I take one of these guys and I use it to charge a battery that I review. Every battery review I do, I do it twice. I charge the battery up with the bank manager until the bank manager says, you're done dude, click, off it goes. Then I uh, do some work with the battery where I overcharge the battery directly and I can see it goes right into the hockey sticks. So they were at, we didn't do that before, but that's where the voltage starts going up and damage starts happening. And since that happens, you know, within just seconds of charging at low current, um, I know that I, the bank manager has stopped at the appropriate time. Then for every battery review, after I use some power out of the battery, I recharge it up to 100% by the bank manager's concept of it. Then I do a discharge to a calibrated source, and I always find there's just a tad more than the rated amp hours of the battery which is actually what the cells are always sold at. You know, when they build 100 amp hour cells, they're actually like 104 amp hour cells. And, and they do that, obviously, so that you don't complain if it's 10% off. They'd rather oversell a little bit than have returns. So um, the bank manager, as far as I'm concerned, proves itself that it can stop at 100 without going up into the big voltages because you charge up and then you test upwards and see, oh yeah, it looks like it was in the right spot. And then again, I test, I charge up, and then I do a discharge, and I can see, yeah, it was in the right spot. Uh, if I didn't charge enough, of course, I wouldn't get 100 amp hours out of a 100 amp hour battery. So we're just going to have to trust this thing works or stop watching the video. What's the sense? Um, in short, 
I've verified to myself this thing works on many, many batteries. And there's hundreds and hundreds of these out in the field and people are happy with them. Well, when I do that setup, I don't do it in the normal install. There's no lead involved. I just use this thing as a battery charger. Of course, that's easy for me because, you know, I developed it. I kind of know what's going on with it. Uh, so in this video, let's just talk about how to, how to set up that. And the reason you'd want to do that is if you had a bank manager either that you weren't using because you upgraded to a Gen 3 and you have a Gen 2 or 1 around, or you just wanted to charge your batteries up, you know, things happen. Uh, you don't have any lead around and you just want to charge them up. That's what this would do for you. Okay, let's set up the test bench and uh, charge a battery. I've taken some power out of this battery so it has some room to accept power. And uh, let's go for it. Okay, you grab a bank manager and you hook it up pretty much the normal way with just a few things left out. So just going down the pins, uh, the first pin is plus five volts and it goes to the current sensor. I'll talk about where that goes in a minute. The current sensor also needs a ground wire. And then there's two outputs from the current sensor. Usually you set them up as a twisted pair and that comes back to the next two poles of the bank manager. Then the fourth pin from the right is the ground that the bank manager needs. Uh, there are two more wires on and off, and they're going to the on and the off uh, coils of the contactor. The contactor itself's common coil, usually you really want to fuse in this. I just decided not to here because of what I do. It makes it safe in other ways. Uh, goes to the lead side big pole. Uh, the, the last two that you actually need for this are the positive uh, lithium that comes from the lithium side of the uh, contactor. And then finally, the lead uh, positive, which comes from the lead side of the contactor. You need a big, big-ish wire. Depends on how many amps you're pushing, of course. Um, I, I'm not pushing a lot right away. Uh, that goes through the current sensor with the arrow pointing towards the battery and to the positive side of your lithium iron phosphate battery. Then you're all set up. Um, I've got a power supply here. You're going to need some way of making 12-ish uh, volts, you know, 12, 14 volts all the time. Um, to, get the thing, to get the bank manager to power up. Now, if you've got a bench power supply or any kind of little power supply, it could be a computer, as long as it doesn't go over 14.6 and as long as it goes, you know, high enough to actually charge, uh, it should work for you. And you hook that on by hooking uh, its positive output to the lead side of the contactor and its negative output to the ground anywhere. I went right to the battery. Then you turn on the bank manager and you'll hear it click the contactor off as it always does when it starts. It's gonna go through its boot cycle. And uh, now it's up. And it's seeing that the lithium battery is at 13.21 volts and that the lead battery is at 14.46. Uh, the lead battery doesn't exist, of course. Now you could actually put a lead battery in this system and it will make your life easier to do a charge if you don't have a good power supply. In a bit, I'm gonna show you how to do it with this monster. And in that case, life would probably be easier for you if you had a little lead battery. Now it could be a little tiny 12 volt lead battery. It wouldn't matter how big it is. All right, so this guy's ready to put out 14.5 uh, volts. Uh, it's not now, it's putting out 0 0.03 amps because that's what a Gen 3 bank manager consumes. You'll wanna go through the menu in the bank manager and set it up for the battery you have. This is a 140 amp hour battery, so I've told it it's a 140 amp hour battery. I'm ready to go. So let's go. How do I turn on the bank manager? It's not charging. Well, the bank manager has a safety in it that says, uh, I'm not gonna let you connect the batteries when they're wildly at different voltages. And the reason for that is if this contactor came down when there was a big voltage differential on two very big banks of batteries, the higher voltage battery is gonna charge that lower voltage really fast with a lot of amps. And your system might not be up to it. I can't promise that your system is up to it. So I put that safety in there. 
Um, that safety is a pain in the butt sometimes. There's just so many times you say, I just want them to connect. If you're comfortable with the safety of your system, now this is you making the decision, not me, you have fusing or you have way big enough wire or for whatever reason you say, I know when it's safe to connect these batteries. Um, I'm gonna show you a trick. Without the trick, you've gotta do whatever you have to do to get the voltages the same. If this is in your boat, very likely if the lead is low, you start your engine for a while. Or if the lead is too high and, and you got yourself disconnected and you wanted them to come together, you would turn off your solar charge controllers and let the voltage come down or turn a load on or something. Okay, so the first way to do it without changing the actual voltage is if you somehow short these two poles together, that will bring the voltage together. Be careful, you know, that could be a lot of current. Again, that's up to you, and I don't recommend it at all. It's kind of the only way outside of actually changing the voltage is to get a Gen 2 or Gen 1 to come together. But a Gen 3, if you take it apart, there's two little pins right about there, two little header pins, and on those header pins is a little jumper on only one of the pins. This is not in the documentation. Remember, you only do this if you're absolutely sure your system can handle this. Take that off and cover both pins. Reboot up the bank manager. It comes up in a mode with one new trick. This is specifically there for this kind of a situation where you want to be able to use this as a charger. Honestly, I put it in because there's a guy uh, developing kind of sports car version <laughs> wheelchairs. Uh, that are going to be very powerful and move quite fast, you know, like over the road wheelchairs kind of. And he really wanted to use lithium iron phosphate and he wanted to charge them this way. So when I was designing the Gen 3, I put this facility in there. The Gen 3 has these two buttons. This one turns it off and on. This one resets it. And what the reset button did originally is after the battery is fully charged and it is not a candidate for recharge, it hasn't been discharged enough, there'd be a little asterisk on the screen. And if you push this, it just gets rid of the asterisk. It says, you are a candidate for recharge. And there's a lot of uses for that, um, but I won't go into it right now. When you make that jumper uh, touch both of the pins, this does one other thing. It says, get rid of the asterisk if it exists, and immediately connect the two batteries. You heard the click. It's now charging at five amps. Five amps are coming out of the power supply, going through the system, going into the battery. The bank manager is saying five, five, one. This is 5.1. Um, trust this meter over that meter, but you know, they're basically reading exactly the same thing. All is going well. So this battery is charging. Um, it will charge for some time because I took quite some power out of it until the bank manager says, hey, you're done. And when it's done, it's done. It's kind of neat because it'll charge for hours and hours. It'll go click and you can come back and push that button and it'll go together off. It knows it's done. If you wait until the voltage on the lithium comes way down, you know, just from normal uh, settling and you push the button again, it'll go charge done. I mean, it, it's really quick. It, 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 it just plain knows. Um, I know I developed the algorithm and it still amazes me that it works as well as it works. Okay, so this is gonna charge. Uh, in my case, it's gonna charge at five amps because that's my power supply. Um, if you had one of those little chargers that looks like a computer um, uh, power supply, you'd have a system like this, probably charging more than five amps, but you'd have a system like this. Let's say you'd like to charge faster. Now, don't charge too fast. Lithium iron phosphate batteries should never be charged at more than 0.5 C. And C is just the uh, amp hours um, divided by your charge rate in uh, amps. So this being a 140 amp hour battery should not be charged faster than 70 amps. Let's grab this thing. So let me plug it in. It's your, it's your basic automotive battery charger. And like if we were to, it's got all these safeties in it. So these are dead. There's no power coming out of them because it won't turn itself on until it sees appropriate voltage. That's why you couldn't use this to do the whole study with. 
but uh, we can hook it on here. So first I'm going to hook it the ground to the, you know, the shared ground of everything. Then I'm going to hook its positive wire to the lead side. There we go. And now I'm going to treat it like a regular battery charger. So I'm still charging at 5 amps. I turn it on. In this particular case, I choose how many amps I'd like to charge at. I'm going to go right to 40. Of course, its fans come on, it goes to work. And now we're 10, 30, jump 40. So I'm charging at 43 amps. Five are coming out of this. 40-ish are coming out of this. Uh, this is lying to us a little bit as they do. So like 38 are really coming out of this. But this battery is being charged at over 40 amps. And again, the bank manager is the brains. Where this thing knows nothing about when to stop, this thing can't stop, it's a power supply. This guy will say, it's time the battery is done and it'll shut it all down. That's all about all there is to it. I'm going to stop the video there because I mean I can run the video and in about a half hour or so this will be fully charged but all it's going to do is say click and uh, this guy goes into the disconnected mode. So that's about it for this video. Uh, I hope this is helpful for somebody. Uh, it might be useful if you want to do just what I said. It also might be useful if you're installing a bank manager, just giving you that other way of thinking about it that lets you more, you know, appropriately understand how a device works. So thanks for watching and bye from Clark on Tempest.